Oh, hello, everyone. This is Daniel, your host of the Mirror Origin. Welcome. Today, I am doing my book review of two books, so this will be a double feature video. I have just finished both these books. Fantastic, fantastic books. Um, give me one second. I want to pull up the information. Uh, the voice actor. Okay. All right. But as you guys know, um, these books are fantastic. And I also listened to the audiobooks The Triumph of the Dwarf, The Fate of the Dwarf. They're all narrated by Neil Dixon and freaking awesome narrators. They did a great job. So. Oh, yeah. Fantastic work, my friend. Mark Hines. Beautiful writing, man. Beautiful, beautiful writing. I'm not saying I actually know this guy, but he's a, I looked him up. He's a German uh, writer. Um, he does several other books. A lot of them are in German. So maybe when they get, if they, if they are actually um, translated, I'll try to find them and try to read some more of his work. But I just finished all five of the dwarf books. And now I'm on to The Raging Storm, which is not a dwarf book, but it's um, worked in the same realm. Uh, he covered, this book is all about the Althar, which are like the dark elves, like elves, but like evil elves who like to build things out of bones and scratch them art, blood, paint, they like to paint with blood and all kinds of stuff. It's pretty crazy. But, um, uh, the dwarf books are pretty much based on the theory the guy had that you know a lot of a lot of stories, a lot of fantasy, a lot of fiction out there, uh, fiction, but a lot of these kind of fantasy books with like elves, dwarves, men. Usually, it's an elf or a man who are the main heroes. And the dwarves are kind of like this funny sidekick who always goes with them, who like to drink and fight and sing songs and craft great works and love their tunnels you know uh like lord of the rings at gimli and his people and freaking love lord of the rings by the way i would put him pretty up there <laughs> he this guy i like these books as much as i like lord of the rings that's saying something so if you are ever looking for some new something to del delve into and you love dwarves as i do this I love the little bearded guys. Great. Freaking my favorite race. Almost ever. And they're included in my book. There are actually two dwarves that I'm putting in my character. But these are the books. They're they're pretty thick. So even the audiobooks are like twenty hours long. It's freaking great, great thing to listen to. So if you have like you know, I think each book is like, I think they're like 12, 13 bucks, something like that. Uh, these are a little more expensive. I found these at a local bookstore. I found all of them. So I got all of them. And the Fate of Doors, or sorry, Fate of Doors comes before the Triumph of the Doors. Triumph of the Doors is the final, final book. Uh, the, pretty much the Fate of Doors, uh, the last book, the. I guess the war door, something like that. Let me look it up real quick. I have it right here. Uh, Fate of Doors, Revenge of the Doors, The War of the Doors. Doors on one. Yeah, so the War of the Doors. And then it, it, we had the Fate of the Doors. Or no, the Revenge of the Doors, sorry. And I did a book review of Revenge of the Doors. And it had the, our main character, uh, Hundil, fighting his way into the Dark Abyss, where all these monsters are coming from. And that was pretty much the last thing we've seen of him. Everybody believes he's dead, except for, um, you know, uh, Ironheart, who his, he got married to his love. And now she's the Magus of that area, and he is defending, because the, 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 there's a barrier 
a magic barrier that holds the darkness back, but it's slowly depleting. And so he's, they built a dwarven fortress around this massive like hole where the creatures will come out. And they man it with all types of elves, man, dwarves, um, uh, Umbar. There's a bunch of other races he has that fight evil that are like in this. And Ironheart is one of my favorite characters ever. He was like a crazy ass little dwarf, and he becomes High King later on. Fate of Dwarves, though, is about the barrier breaks. Tundo returns in the black armor, it's black kinium armor, which is like a dark, evil metal. And he pretty much comes out of the abyss and destroys. And leading, it looks like he's leading the army, turns around and then kills one of the major monsters and then joins Ironheart and his team to push back the thing and then reclose the barrier. And it's pretty interesting because, like, there's, like, a, a mystery about him. Like, where it's been 250 cycles, which is a year in this book. Cycles are years. So 250 years later, he finally comes forward. And the people that he once knew, he was in love with a new, this like half dwarf, half um, other race. And, and she has been long dead. She, it's her generation, generation. And then, you know, but he doesn't really seem to care about feelings for anybody. He helps bring all the races together to fight. And he goes and pretty much recruits. Uh, Glad has fallen. In this book, um, 250 years, the, the Alphar have returned in great numbers, taking most of Gurgurglad. Same with a dragon who's taken part of it. And the Magus from the old one, his, his adopted father, has been possessed by an evil Magus who also is controlled some of. And it's like these, like, there's like three major powers that are like constantly struggling against each other. And there's the rebels. Uh, he comes in and he convinces the dwarves that they need to bring multiple, uh, they have to bring the, the enemy under them to fight the darkness that's coming from the abyss, this like abyssal area, Brent Drossen. And if these monsters are released, then all hell is going to, it's all going to, yeah, it's, it's going to, shit's going to suck. So, uh, he goes around recruiting. He gets uh, pretty into the book. I'm not going to spoil anything, okay? But something happens, and Tundal is killed. And you think that's the end. And the way they narrated it, it was like, this is probably going to be my last book. I really enjoyed this, but I think it's time to move on to something else. And I believe he created one of the other books, either Raging Storm or another one. There are two um, books I believe they're dealing with. Uh, with um, the, the dark-eyed um, Alfar. So it was interesting. Uh, then, then I got a hold of the Triumph of the Dwarves. This is also in Tundal Returns. A different Tundal. What is going on? They get a message, actually, a message of massive wolf creatures, little metal things around their neck. Um, Ironheart ends up killing one pretty much by himself. But one took down like half a dozen elves and men by itself. And another one finds itself with Ironheart, who's now High King. In the uh, uh, fate or yeah, the fate of dwarves, Tundel becomes high king of the dwarves, and then when he is killed, and then later on, um, Ironheart is actually elected high king, and so Ironheart is a warrior dwarf who doesn't really um like having to deal with all these dual, you know, stuff. And so now, you, now you have the warrior who has been on all these adventures, he, one, of the, one of the greatest heroes of the dwarves, sitting as High King, who hates being High King, 
<laughs> who's constantly wanting to go on these adventures with everybody, but he can't because he's hiking and you know, all the other doors like you can. If you die, something bad will happen. All the doors will fall apart. Blah, 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 blah. So he's kind of constantly like deal with like the other rulers and he thinks they're all kind of idiots. There's like a little girl named, um, oh, what was her name? Can't think of it right now. Names always kind of escape me. Sitara, Sitar, something like that. Sorry, I just escaped me right this second. But um, who has the power to influence others, pretty much take over their minds. The closer she is to them, if she can have physical contact with them, she can dominate their own. Um, and she's a little girl. And some of the, one of the queens from the who was a descendant was also a rebel, became queen. In this book, um, sees her as her like adopted daughter and loves her. And so she slowly starts to take over the minds of elves and humans and so on and so forth who fall deeply in love with this little girl because she can pretty much control their their emotions and their minds. And this little girls are scared. Pretty much, you find out later in the book, she's just scared. It's, her family is murdered by Alfar. She's been on the run ever since. And there's a whole nest of people marching to hunt her down. So, uh, she just wants to be free. And so she builds up. She helps bring peace, which is actually pretty interesting. She actually helps bring like a, a resounding peace between elves, man, and doors. Doors are un uninfected. She can't. She can't control them. There's something the dwarves have like an immunity to any kind of influence. They're too stubborn. So it's funny when she tries to control the dwarves, and they're just like, "Please." Um, and you find out there's another one. There's some crazy creatures out there, and but the books are great. There's one creature that looks like a man, but it's like supposed to be like um, a body with like tons and tons of souls in it, so it makes it inhuman can't be killed by anything but they have these like copper helms on and if these copper helms are like destroyed they can only be destroyed by like extreme heat because that will melt the ruins on the copper helm which will cause it, it to die but when it dies it like there's an explosion like a massive detonation it'll wipe out like like a, like a bomb goes off and it'll wipe out whole sections of army it's sick and awesome and you get this new uh, Tundil's back. Everybody's kind of questioning what happened because Tundil was mur was killed in the last book by Kingfire. And but now there's another Tundil. Then you find out in this book that there might have been a magical effect that caused him to duplicate. And so this one claims to be the original Tundil, and. He wants just wants to be peace. You know, this one is not as violent as the other one. He just wants to be to rest. He, you know, he struggled his way out of front trust and found a, an escape route through some tunnels. And finally, was free. He took off all his armor. He didn't want to carry a weapon anymore. But, you know, so on and so forth. So it was pretty interesting. Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh, these books are great. The guy does a freaking fantastic job of bringing this world to life. Um, very, very well written, very well told. The narrator, um, Neil Dixon, Neil Dixon was a fantastic narrator. Uh, everything just, it brought you to this world and it was great. So I definitely suggest if you want an audiobook or you want a book, Look at these books up. They're freaking awesome. I am right now in the middle. Uh, just started uh, Raging Storms. And it's pretty good so far. Uh, it's not about the dwarves. It's about the Alfar. And it's like different stories from different areas of Alfar. And it's kind of like a, but from their viewpoint. So it's an interesting thing. Because usually the, the Alfar are like this, you know, scorned by every every other race as evil and it's just it's interesting to watch like how they feud with each other how they're very elf like 
also. So they believe they're better than most other races, um, except they have like a darker twist to them, especially with like they like the art. Like I said before, they like the, the paint with blood. And they like to decorate their cities with bones of defeated enemies from everything. It's like crafted with bone, like bone and silver wires, and just like elegant looking pieces and displays of like terror. What would mostly look like there's the most terrifying sights you could think of, but also like, like a deep, dark beauty to them. So it's, they're a very interesting race. And the only, and they hate the elves, and the elves hate them. So it's pretty funny because they're pretty much the same. They look exactly the same, except for um, when uh, this darkness, or so, I think when the sun hits, their eyes go black. So you can tell that they're not elves. Oh, so it's very interesting. Um, they do have a part in the book where a um, elf have discovered a way to um, with eye to eye mass the dark the blackness of their eyes so they're able to infiltrate elven communities even more or which causes a lot of uproar but it's still good books are fantastic and i definitely suggest you get them so please if you're interested in reading anything look these books up also shout out to ty mfs i'm reading his book right now i'm about quarter way in I know. I've got to get these books done. I've got his review out there for you guys. So, thank you all for coming. Thank you for uh, staying till the end if you have. And if you are interested in books, just let me know in the comments. You know, sometimes, you know, it's good to find like these, like, you know, Mark Hines isn't like a name I would have known. He might be really well known in Germany. He's not well known here in America. Uh, but these books are worth it. And I bet you he's got a massive fan base out there. So please find these books. Find like these other authors. You know, sometimes it's good to look for, you know, not ma major franchise books, but some like, you know, other fantasy books. I love Lord of the Rings. I love Star Wars. Well, I used to love Star Wars, but. Sometimes if you find these kind of books from like smaller authors like myself when my book comes out, um, definitely hit them up, tell them what you think, um, and they'll be grateful for it. I've talked to the, one of the authors of the other books I've reviewed, and he was super happy that I loved his stuff, and he was very appreciative. He even gave me hint and tips and stuff. So everyone, stay safe. Be healthy. Be good to each other. Hail of Enemies. Hail Geeks and Gamers. I stand by you. Hollywood is junk. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.